Yo, welcome back to the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel for an episode of Rock Fantasy Files or whatever we call it. Haven't been on in a few weeks, took a little spring break, got busy with some other things, and hey, it was good to take a little break, right? It's another season, I guess. We're going to try to keep this thing going in the warm weather, but uh, I set this up a few weeks ago. It kind of came into my mind because at the record shop, we had Overkill and Metallica both came out in the same day. And we got chatting with a few of, my, few of us on this channel to say, hey, why don't we compare, you know, the new Metallica, new Overkill? <laughs> I said, why don't we go a little further and compare some of the other North American thrash bands? Most of these are from California Bay Area. So we'll get this started. We've got six albums tonight we're going to talk about uh, that's from bands that started in the 80s that all started playing in the thrash metal genre. And they're all still flying the metal flag currently. Some are playing clubs, some are headlining giant stadiums. So uh, we're going to start this off and get what our bunch of people here think about these records. And some of them probably have just listened to them for the first time. Some maybe we've listened to them for a couple of years because one came out in 2019. So it's a six-way album battle in alphabetical order. The latest from the latest in the ninth studio album from Death Angel with Human Side. Human Side which was released in 2019 on May 31st. That's our first album going into battle tonight and the oldest one. Second up is the 11th studio album from Exodus, Persona Non Grata, which was no released November 19th in 2021. And Denny is giving devil horns for these two. We'll see if he does this for all six to, uh, to confuse us uh, with his picks later. And uh, third up is the 11th studio album from Metallica with 72 seasons he's giving the thumbs down uh, could he be tricking us that was released released recently april 14th of 2023 of this year next up fourth up is the 16th studio album by megadeth the sick the dying and the dead which was released september 2nd of 2022 last year fifth up it's a 20th studio so this band's obviously been busier than the other ones over the years well, 20th studio album by Overkill with the title is Scorched and it was also released on the same day as the Metallica album April 14th of 2023 and last but not least this 13th studio album by Bay Area Thrash Band Legends Testament with the Titans of Creation which was released April 3rd of 2020 I still remember getting that where the store wasn't open we're in the middle of a pandemic. These guys are putting the record out. They just came off the tour in Europe. Uh, Will Carroll from Death Angel was on was probably in a coma at this time. We didn't know if he was going to live or survive. Luckily, Will pulled through. Pulled through. He's been on the channel, and it was just a scary time for all of us to come out. Meanwhile, this album came out, and I remember just listening to it in this room because it was the only place I could go. And uh, Love the record, but anyhow, I, I'm not going to get my ratings till the end. We've got a good bunch of people here tonight. We got eight in the room right now. We might get a couple more popping in. We got Ed Farsley from Armageddon Productions. We got Tony Dio from the South in North Carolina. We got Mr. Stephen Levin, who was sure to be a harsh critic and will be the Chris Allo on this episode, I think, again. We've got Mr. Miles Bergen from the South. We got Ovi staying up all night, and he's got some special episodes on this channel coming up in the, in, within the next few weeks, at least. He's in Norway. We got Danny Barr, the Bigfoot from aggression up in the Northwest Territories. And he's sending us all kinds of smoke down to the United States from his country right now. New York City had an 8.0 rating in air quality today i think that's one of the highest in the world ever the worst count ralphus is here how bad was it down there today ed really bad really yeah. bad it was bad even around here i was like as far as you hear it's, it's it looks like a, a wildfire yeah <laughs> crazy it looks like some kind of armageddon shit going on of course we're getting used <laughs> to armageddon we've had the last few years under our belts here right so anyhow uh I guess we're going to just go through this whole thing. We're going to go around to each guest. We're going to get their ranking, what they like the least, up to what they like the best. And I, I have to once again mention that Denny Barth is our scorekeeper. 
He's used to scoring hockey games, but he's scoring the heavy metal tonight. So uh, I guess we'll kick this thing off. Uh, just in the order I have everybody on my screen, I'm going to kick this off with Mr. Ed Farsley and see what his uh, point of view is on these albums. I'm sure he's dealt with and seen all of them a million times. Yeah, as, pretty much. as we all probably have in this room. All right, cool. Um, yeah, this was an interesting one. Um, I, I don't have any of these albums yet. Um, one of them I will be getting very soon. The others I may get eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was so it was enjoyable listening to them for the first time. Um, all these bands, like Steve mentioned, I've seen them a billion times. I've known them for 40 years. So very, very well versed with the bands. Some I like, some I don't like so much. Mm -hmm. um, let's get this started. Um, of these bands, um, first off, I got to say, I haven't listened to this intensely a Metallica and a Megadeth album in 30 years. <laughs> um, to every note of them, every song, and I haven't really changed my opinions of them, but we'll get to the bands now. Um of the six bands, the six albums, my least favorite is Megadeth. Um, wow. Never been in the band except the first two albums. Killing Is My Business is a fantastic album, flawless. I love it. Um, Peace Sells, great album. After that, major downhill for me. Never got into the band after that. Never really liked, aside from a song or two here and there. Um, cannot stand Dave's whiny vocals. Um, he gets worse <laughs> through the years. Um, this album, I have to say, his vocals aren't quite as whiny and annoying as usual. So that's a plus. Um, otherwise, uh, let's see. Yeah, the vocals. Um, the best part of the album, the guitar work. Um, very fast guitar work. Again, Dave is a great guitarist, no question about it. Um, songwriting, eh, not so much. Uh, but songs like Night Stalkers and We'll Be Back, great guitar work, very fast, very aggressive, good stuff. Um, best song in the album for me, The Planet's on Fire with Sammy Hagar. What can I say? It sounds like a Sammy Hagar song. It sounds good. Dave actually sounds good singing it. Um, so that's my highlight of that album. Um, next next album, number five, Metallica. Um, again, I haven't been a fan of this band 35 years. Um the last thing they did that was even remotely metal, in my opinion, was in the early 90s. Um, this album, I gave it a solid listen to. Started off pretty decently. You know, nice bass line, nice opening riff. Had, had a little groove to it. Then it kicks into the usual Metallica mid-pace beat. And then James's vocals kick in, and that's about it for me. Um, hmm. Best song on the album for me is the first song, 20, uh, 72 Seasons. Oh. Um, after that, I really can't get into the songs. Um Let's see here. Uh, stuff like uh, Sleepwalk My Life Away has a 90s pop metal feel as far as I'm concerned. Could be on a corner disturbed album or some crap like that. Um, <laughs> they're trying to sound heavy at times. I just don't think they come across that way at all. Uh, like I said I, I really lost touch with them a long time ago. and mm -hmm. This is the best album I've heard them do in probably 25, 30 years, but still not a fan. Um, number four album. Exodus, Persona Non Grata. Um, typical Exodus thrash album. Again, Exodus have had their ups and downs. Some of the albums have been a little too generic, a little too basic. Some of them really kick ass. This one's kind of in the middle. Um, it's got some good songs, some monotone songs, but for the most part, it's a good album. Um, nothing that blew me away, but again, it's consistent, and it's Exodus. Um, Gary Holt and Lee, um, fantastic guitar work. Again, stand out on the album, the guitar work. Great, great stuff. Zetro's vo vocals, I've been a fan of Zetro in the past, especially when he first joined the band and with Legacy and Testament all back then, back in the day. Um, his vocals are more annoying on this album than ever, I think. Um, he just sounds too high-pitched, too raspy, and just he's trying too hard to hit that that high note. Just not really not really doing it for me. Uh, some of the best songs, Elitist, Clickbait, and The Fires of Division. Um, next one, Death Angel. Uh, I had a hard time choosing between Death Angel and Testament because I do like both the albums. Um, mm -hmm. Death Angel, Human Aside, great opening riff and scream. Just kicks it in just, just on a 10 right off the bat. Um, from there, again, ups and downs, some really good songs, some monotone songs. Nothing bad, nothing too generic, and just Death Angel tear it up. They always have. They always will, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Mark's vocals are phenomenal. Uh, more aggressive and vicious than ever on this album. Um, great musicianship, as always. Death Angel's always been great musicians. Uh, a couple of the best songs, Humana Side, Alive and Screaming. Just really great stuff. Really great thrash metal. Um, Testament, Titans of Creation. Another just 
Typical Testament album, good Testament album, good thrash album. Um, some of the songs, like, in the middle of the album, get a little kind of like the follow, for, for, formulaic, let's say. Um, just kind of the follow the same trend as the other songs. But, again, not bad songs. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Brutal as Ever. Uh, yeah, one thing I don't like about Testament is their slow songs. Uh, City of Angels, in the past, I mean, basically none of the, the, the slow ballad songs I got into, as opposed to Overkill, but I love all this slow stuff. Um, Chuck's vocals are fantastic on it. Um, his voice hasn't changed at all. Um, just got heavier. Uh, a few of the best songs, World War Three, probably my favorite song in the album. Uh, Children of the Next Level, False Prophet. Just a really great album. Um, number one album, Overkill, Scorched, of course. Just a fantastic album. Overkill has been one of the most consistent thrash bands through their 40-year career to always put out great records. They had a few clunkers back in the 90s or whatever, early 2000s. But for the most part, in the last 20 years, mm. all this stuff is great. Phenomenal band live, great guys, and just a kick-ass band. Scorched is no exception. Um, kicks off right away and just never lets up. There's brutality from start to finish, pure overkill. Blitz's vocals, fantastic as always. Musicianship, top notch, and just a great thrash record. Um, just like I said, one of the most consistently good thrash records ever. Uh, thrash bands, rather, ever. A um, couple of great songs, Going Home, The Surgeon, um, and Fever. Like I said, I mentioned, I love Overkill's slow side. When they do the slow songs like Fever, they, they do a slow song, at least one on every album. They always kick ass. Um, Bag of Bones, fun closer, good song. Um, just a great album start to finish. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Metallica and Overkill. The album came out in the same, both albums came mm -hmm. out in the same day. I was out in Chicago for Metal Threat. My friend Greg had gotten both albums. So we're sitting in a hotel and listening to both albums all freaking weekend. Metallica was getting on my nerves after a while. <laughs> Overkill loved it every minute, of, every minute of the weekend. And so that's the album I will be picking up from you next time I see you. Soon. Okay. There you have it. Take it away. Cool, cool. Well, obviously, Ed's not going to get on the guest list for Megadeth or Metallica anytime soon. I'm not uh, even going to shows. No, nah, no, no. And you're not getting tickets sent from the band. <laughs> nope. We were talking about that with John McAtee a few episodes ago. He was ragging on He's like, I guess you're never going to get called to open up for the Metallica tour, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, we're going to move over. Thanks for your time to the channel. It's always a pleasure to have you on. And here we go over to the man with a million CDs behind him. He's got an army of CDs. Tony Dio. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be back. Yeah, um, I don't really own hard copies of any of these except for one of them. And that's actually going to be my number one. Um, we're going to start out. I'm going to kind of follow in, in Ed's footsteps here. I got to go Megadeth at the bottom. Wow. Um, not a bad, not a bad record. I'm not a huge Megadeth fan. Uh, I like some of the early stuff and, but the last few albums they've done over the years, it's been, you know, it's good. They've got great musicianship, great guitar playing, but it's just, I'm kind of with him on the vocals with Dave. I, um, but there's some good songs on it. I liked, uh, life in hell and it will be back, but I think my favorite thing, just like Ed said, I, the, the Sammy Hagar um, song, This Plants wow. on Fire, Burn Hell, from that's like from his like 79 Street Machine album back when Hagar was actually considered to be a metal artist, you know. So uh, that's always been a favorite Hagar song of mine. So I thought they did a good cover of that. Um, but from there, I'm going to go to Metallica. And um, I listened to the Metallica several times, and I liked it a lot better than the one that came before it. Um, mm -hmm. It's... It's got elements of rehashed black album riffs. Uh, some of it reminds me a little bit of Injustice. I don't know, maybe if it's the production quality of it or something. There was, a, there was one song I remember I, I should have took note that kind of reminded me of an Injustice riff. Um, but, um, you know, Metallica, they, they have, they could come out with a killer kick-ass, like, 1980s style Metallica record if they wanted to. I'm sure they could do it. And, but they just, you know, they seem to kind of wander off into whatever they're into at the time. I think, but this one, like a, this one's, you know, like I said, it's got some good, decent songs. I thought uh, Lux Eterna 
that one's a cool song. You put a little more reverb on the vocals and speed it up a little bit. It actually sounded like something off Kill 'Em All in a way. Um, and Room of Mirrors was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's like, you know, I said about talking about Metallica, they're such an influential band. You know, I run a music store and I have kids coming in playing guitar all the time. Yeah, I don't hear any kids come in and play anything off any Metallica album over the last 20 some years. They come in and they play, you know, Seek and Destroy and Master of Puppets, and they mm -hmm. still want to hear those first three albums. And and I think that's cool that that music is still so strong. So as long as I've got those three Metallica albums, even the fourth album, I'm good. I don't really need to hear anything else or own anything from new Metallica at all. Um, from there, I think I'm going to go to Exodus as well. Um, I didn't like this album as much as uh, Blood In, Blood Out, the one before it. Um, but it has some cool stuff about it. Um, they they tend to they could kind of rehash a lot of their riffs as well, but they've always got great guitar work, great guitar solos and so forth on their stuff. Um, the, beat, the beatings will continue until more morale is improved. I thought it's the greatest song title, and it's actually a pretty cool song. And Slipping Into Madness is a really good one as well. So like I said, it's, I don't think it's as good as some of the stuff that they've done in the past. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the Rob Dukes era at all, but I love, you know, the early, you know, Bonnie by Blood and, mm -hmm. and Pleasures of the Flesh and, and Fabulous Disaster and, and so forth. And I look, I, I love their return album when they came back with Tempo to Damn. I thought that was one of the best comeback records in, in thrash history. It's a really mm -hmm. cool record. Um, from there, we're going to go to Overkill. Uh, I need to listen to this a little bit more because I, I really like what I heard. Uh, I feel like some of the last few albums they have done have almost become a blur because they almost sound like the, the same album rehashed over and over. Um, but this one had some cool stuff on I thought was really cool. Um, know Her Name was a really cool song. Uh, Won't Be Coming Back, another good one. And I thought the opening track of Scorched uh, is just killer. That's a great track i mean it, they are definitely sticking with the overkill formula and uh you know just not letting you down with not, not being a thrash band because they're just that's what they do best mm -hmm. speed and thrash yeah. um so from there i'm gonna go to death angel um i, I really really like this death angel record it, it's definitely a return to form for them um it, it reminds me a lot of ultra violence in a way it's got some great guitar work on it uh, especially uh, Ghost of Me, that had some ripping solos on that one. And the title track, Humanicide, is really, really cool. Uh, or the opening track, yeah, the title track. Is, and this, that's a really cool track for me. Um, um, they've just always been a really, really good thrash band. You know, they, they were kind of experimental. I mean, you had you had Ultra Violence, which was a thrash classic. And then they kind of got a little experimental on uh, Frolics Through the Park, mm -hmm. throwing in some funk and jazzy parts into it. And then, of course, the third album, they were all over the place experimenting with, you know, kind of almost alternative rock and, and some grunge and, and acoustic stuff. But um, what they do best is, is that thrash metal, like from the first album. So um, this album, definitely Humanicide, goes back to the roots of the first record. And my number one record for is going to only one I got a hard copy of is, is the Testament record. And uh, this has really grown on me a lot over the last couple of years. I think it might be my third favorite by them after their wow. first two albums. Um, Children of the Next Level, just a killer opening track about, you know, the whole uh, Heaven's Gate uh, suicide um, cult that happened, you know, back in the day. And uh, one of the best tracks, I mean, one of my favorite tracks they've ever came up with is Dream Deceiver. It's just got this killer chorus hook in the song sing along chorus which you usually don't really get in a, in a testament song but it but it's really cool and it's become one of my favorite tracks so yeah testament's gonna be my number one cool and i agree with you on a lot of the things you were just saying so <laughs> but my my number is gonna be a little different than some people but i think i think some of the bottoms uh i'm surprised so far on the megadeth there's a lot of megadeth haters in this panel I got a lot of friends that love that record, but I don't hate of... them. I just don't care much for their. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mega. So Megadeth's got two thumbs down. In fact, Metallica might even be ahead of them after two two yeah. people here. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> the battle of Metallica and Megadeth goes on throughout the <laughs> throughout the decades, and well, I don't know. I think we better uh, put our seatbelts on and buckle in because Stephen Levin, <laughs> it's now next on my order and. 
I don't think he's going to get any free tickets to go see Metallica after this review. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, uh, maybe he will. But... No, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, me and me and Lars aren't really friends anymore. You know, like I, I did some <laughs> offended him, so I think he lost my number. So I wasn't expecting tickets anyway. But you know, <laughs> Lars, still here if you want to send them to me. You know, but maybe anyway, you'll, maybe he'll show up to watch here. Five Finger uh, Death Punch, right? What's that? Maybe you'll show up to watch Five Finger Death Punch open up. Yeah, <laughs> or minus. They'll make band. Metallica sound like the first album. <laughs> well, anyhow. <laughs> so anyway, my bottom two are going to be very much exactly the same as you guys. Uh, for me, Megadeth is the bottom though because wow. Dave's voice is just horrible and he just doesn't <laughs> get it. And even though the lead work is really fast, it's not memorable. You can't remember any of the stuff that's on there. And this guy, to me, writes some of the most memorable, most insane riffs. I mean, when he got tossed out of Metallica with that whole situation and he came out, that first demo was so angry. It was so pissed off. The emotion that came through it, it was just straight up fire. And like, he's just lost that now. Now he just is very opinionated and what he says, and he should really stop talking because... Sometimes he just doesn't even sound that smart, to be honest with you. But uh, like honestly, I just think it's a very, very uninspired album. And nothing really struck my fancy. Nothing really stood out. And I think the last thing they did that really I remember being good, I think it was Endgame, maybe. Mm. Maybe it was Endgame or 13. Was there one called 13? Yeah, there was. Uh, Tony yeah. was uh, Tony's my dude for this stuff when I kind of start to... I think hit. that I followed... But it seems like I remember that. I actually, yeah, I, remember I, actually I like Dystopia a lot. The album before this. Yeah, I don't know I what it is. It, like he gets these guys that are amazing technical players, oh, yeah. but like being an amazing technical player doesn't mean that you write amazing solos. Sometimes you have to put some feeling into that, and a lot of these guys don't. I mean, if you want to hear a guy who does, listen to a dude like James Murphy because that's the way that you should be playing. You know, to me anyway, if you're going to play like, you know, really heavy stuff. So, yeah, the Megadeth, I mean, we'll be back was decent. Uh, that song, Police Truck, I got a kick out of that. That was kind of funny, but like just very uninspired. I would give it a two out of ten. And uh, wow. Wow, very, very close on the heels. Wow. And I have to say, look, guys, come on. Don't you guys know, like, I know guys that will come to your house, James, and they will record the band on their little MacBook and it'll sound better than the production you've got on your last five albums. Because what the fuck? Wake up, guys. Get a modern production. This is like the weakest sounding. It sounds like a weak rock album. I mean, you can't even classify this as being metal. But oh, that means... We're talking about Metallica here. Yes, yeah. No, oh, I yeah. jumped... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Did I, did I? Was I talking too fast? You missed that one? Yeah, I missed that. Well, I, I was actually just looking at a note on something, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the the I mean, the production's so bad, but Papa Hetz still writes some great rhythms. Some of the songs are catchy, and for all those haters of Kirk Hammett, the dude writes good solos. Maybe he steps on his wah-wah a little bit, but you can remember <laughs> them. They sound good. You can hum along to them, and I really like what Kirk does, so a lot of guys hate what he does. You know, he does... I, I do think he should lay off the wall a little bit, but he really does write some memorable stuff. Very much unlike Dave Mustaine right now. So I would also give this album a two out of 10. Mm. 72 Seasons would be my favorite song. Lux Eterna is a decent song too, but just not really listenable. And the funny thing was, I think it started at like a four out of 10 and it kept going down the more I listen, uh. the more I listen and the more I listen. But I still rate it a little bit better than the Megadeth because it is a little bit more catchy, but just, very awful attempts at making music and they really have no clue what their fans want to hear right now. And they should really just go back to just coming back and having tours where they play all the classic albums and nothing else. And everybody be very happy. And then we could say, okay, they're a great band again, but until then I'm afraid we're going to have to keep hating on them. And then after that, surprisingly an album that I thought was going to be really, really good. I'm not going to say it wasn't really good, but it was just very similar to everything else that they've done lately. And I think that that was already touched upon by Tony was the overkill and mm -hmm. any overkill in the last so many years, they're all very much the same form formula, very similar sounding. One thing that I did notice a lot on this album, it's 
very, very Black Sabbath-y. It has a lot of Black Sabbath influence, both in Dee Dee's playing and some of the riffs. And uh, it's a really interesting album. I just, it didn't just, there was nothing that I thought really stood out. I was actually doing a little bit of cleaning around the house at the time, listening to it, and nothing like grabbed my attention. And it actually, the album ended and started again. And then I was like, did that just start again? So it's just kind of like something that I put on the background nothing crazy. I would rate this a seven out of 10. Good album. It'll probably grow on me. I'll probably like it better as time goes on. But as for right now, just nothing that catchy. Uh, I think like Tony said, I need to digest it a little bit more to uh, mm -hmm. see how I feel like about it. I think in a month, I'll probably give it a little bit higher rating. Um, after that, uh, I would give the Testament an eight out of 10. Um, same kind of thing. This one, uh, it was on in the background, but this one actually did add a couple of moments was when I was like, whoa, what song is this? Uh, the song Symptoms, I thought was really good. The song Healers, uh, really good. Curse of Osiris, uh, mm -hmm. Osiris is really good. And uh, I mean, I guess that uh, listening to it loosely, he's telling a story. And uh, I really did like it. It's, it's a good album. I don't think they put out anything bad since 94 uh, when they had that first album, Low, with Tempestra. Uh, playing drums and they finally got rid of the guy that had no double bass which i could never understand how testament mm -hmm. had a drummer that just really never had any double bass it killed them for me you know it was really a band i didn't listen to back in the day and then after low came out i mean i like every album they put out uh that one still being one of my favorites but even mm -hmm. in recent history uh i thought like formation of damnation was a little bit better than this one. Oh yeah uh, Still a solid album, though. I, I'm not going to say any, you know, no hate here. I think Chuck is amazing vocalist, and uh, he's really a great lyricist. Um, then after that, uh, the Exodus album, I got to say, really surprised me because I did not think, I remember hearing whatever single they released for it back in the day, and I haven't really listened to it at all, hardly, to be honest with you. And I thought the album was just blazing fire. It's just relentless from start to finish. It's everything that thrash metal should be. A lot of the stuff reminded me of the old school stuff when uh, uh, Gary Holt and uh, Rick Honot would trade off leads. Now it's him and Lee Altis doing it. And uh, Zekro's voice, voice, I just love it. I, I think this is a really good album. And this is actually one that I will go back and probably listen to and put in my rotation. And oh. uh, I liked, uh, unlike Tony, I did like the Rob Dukes era stuff. Uh, of course, it's never going to compare to Bail Off. My favorite thing that they ever do did recently was that live album they did with Bail Off uh, before he passed away. It's just comical. You get true Bail Off on it. Some of the stuff he says is hilarious. It's it's just so great. But uh, this is a great album. I really did enjoy it quite a bit. And uh, this would is going to tie um, with my favorite with the Death Angel, which is another just really killer album. So, um, so wait a minute. You have a tie for number one? with the exodus and death angel both getting a nine out of ten denny both... just jenny denny just to screw up your scorekeeping now you gotta figure out two yeah. number one. Oh no he, he, <laughs> he's still putting death angel slightly uh, ahead. Oh, okay That's, it's slightly ahead okay but slightly ahead it's a drop more interesting rob kvestin he's one of my favorites i like to try to play like rob he's a guy who can do all sorts of little tricks and little stuff in between their main riffing and it still mm -hmm. sounds brilliant he's never stepping on the song he's always playing along with it he's never doing anything too technical but he's always just doing enough technical stuff i think he's really interesting in what he does he's amazing he's been like that from years to years mark's one of my favorite vocalists in the thrash metal scene he's also one of the nicest guys if you ever get a chance to talk mm -hmm. to him buy him a drink hang out with him he's just a fucking really really cool guy really can't say enough about death angel i love the fact that they're still carrying the flag Ultra Violence was one of my favorite albums back in the day. And uh, I really did like Frolic in the Park. And uh, the third album was a little bit all over the place, but it did have Seemingly Endless Time, which I love that mm -hmm. song, man. What a great, great song. You know, what a great opener. But uh, a lot of my friends lost Death Angel. I know Ralph did for a while. They wasn't uh, real crazy about Frolic in the Park because they definitely had changed a little bit. But uh, I don't know. I've always been like that with music. I've always just yeah. continued to grow, even to the point that, you know, I'm still listening to stuff like this now. So, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, whatever. It was really fun doing this episode. And uh, I really wanted to like the Metallica more. But I got to say that I'm not disappointed that I don't like it the more. Megadeth kind of shocks me because I feel like he's so much better than this album is. Mm. But, yeah, I think the Exodus and the Death Angel will be in my regular rotation. So. Cool. 
know, it was really cool to hear something that, you know, is new and fresh and now I have something new to listen to. So I thank you, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure. And thanks uh, for coming. I'll turn it over to the next person. You weren't as harsh as I thought you were going to be. Well, I mean, you, you were know. kind of friendly tonight to the bands, even <laughs> even ones you didn't like. You were pretty friendly tonight. So. <laughs> If you want, I can go back and, you know, use some... No, no, no. We'll, 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 we'll say that for the uncensored uh, episode. Uh, if I see Lars tonight, you know, like that. <laughs> and uh, we'll give a shameless plug for Death Angel, since Will's one of our family comes on the channel. I've been on a while because he's back to work, which is great. But Death Angel are on tour in North America. They are actually coming to New York City this weekend, and they are part of the Titans of Metal, I think it's being called, or... Is it Clash of the Titans? I think they're calling it Clash of the Titans. It's uh, Sepultura and Creator headline co-headline with Death Angel, and I'm I'm mistaken. There is another band, and I don't remember the name of the. There is a fourth. I know it is too. There is a fourth one. It's, I uh, think Spirit it's Spirit World opens. Oh, uh, Spirit uh, World. Yes. Okay, I'm familiar with them. I sell their vinyl. So that's this weekend in New York City. If you can make it, so, uh, and whoever. So anyhow, plugging. We're going down south. To see Miles now, he is our center square, at least on my screen, because Count Ralphus has been popping around. He's back on now, so we got him back. So there's nine of us in the room. Miles, let's hear what your take is on these six records. Yeah, it's good to see everybody again from our little break. And um, I will say these albums, listening to these, some of them were a chore. Some of them <laughs> I really did enjoy. And... um. Kicking this off, um, number six, I'm going Metallica, 72 Seasons. Um, I could fall asleep listening to this album, how boring it is. Wow. Yes, it is boring. Um, I can't say I was let down or surprised because it's pretty much what I expected from this album. Um, the single Lux Eterna came out, and I thought it was a good single, so it kind of gave me a little bit high hopes, but I knew – Going into the whole album, I was going to, you know, think about what I thought about it. And pretty much it, it is what it is. It's it's nothing special. I, I see a lot of people say that they 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 see stuff that was like early Metallica. I, I just don't see it. And I've gave this album like a couple of chances and it's too long in, in a sense. A, a lot mm -hmm. of this album can be cut down and I think it would it benefit a lot from it. And one thing that just is a snore fest is Lars is drumming on this album. It's like, I know we were talking a little bit before, but I, um, I loved his drumming on and justice for all. I thought that was great. If that was him or not, it's, but um, man on here is just like, what do you, man? I, I mean, he's got some cool feel fills in some spots, but sometimes it's just like, man, my grandma can play these beats, man. And oh, out of all God. these albums, man, it's just, it's, it's just boring. But, uh, I think James sounds good in some spots. I think Kurt sounds real good in, uh, some of the solos, mm -hmm. but just overall a boring record for me. Um, the next one, number five, I'm going Megadeth, um, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Overall, when the when the first single came out, I was kind of pumped up. I was like, man, this sounds really good. First time I heard this record, the first song on the record, um, the title track, I thought was really good. I was like, man, this is this is gonna be a good record. Then the then the record goes on, and I'm like, oh Lord. Um, you got Ice T making an appearance on this record, and it comes out of. I I didn't see that he was on this record, but it came out of nowhere. Kind of threw me off a little bit the first time I heard the song. Um, the song "Sacrifice." I thought Dave's vocals on there were shot. Wow. I'm like, holy shit, this is bad. But it in songs like "Junkie," like I get it. What you're making this song about? But can you write it a little bit more clever than besides just putting it like, oh, you're a junkie, you're a junkie. I'm like, come on, can we put some more clever thought into these lyrics? But, you know, the Dogs of Chernobyl, um, Killing Time, and um, the first single that came out, I, I thought those were real good songs, but 
this this album did a lot more that I didn't like than I did like. So that's why it comes here at number five. Number four, I'm going with Testament Titans of Creation. I have the record right here. Got it when it first came out. Um, I will say these next four records I really do enjoy a lot. Um, the Testament record I thought going into this would be the clear number one for me, but going and listening to the other records, this one kind of fell a little bit for me. It's not that I hate the record, not at all. I think Chuck Billy sounds amazing on this record, but, um, just some of the songs didn't stick with me. Like the first time I listened to it, I think, uh, city of angels is a good song. Symptoms is a great song. World war three great song but going back and listening to it i just didn't find myself as interested in it than the first time i listened to it so that's why it comes here at number four still a great record number three is an album that i was really surprised for is death angel i, I was never a, i like the first record but i'm other records i'm not really the biggest fan of so when this album came out i wasn't looking forward to it but listening to it for a while because i know we took a little break and i was listening to these albums off and on for a while this was <laughs> this was my number one this wow. was a great record i thought that this whole record was really really good really strong in a lot of areas but it's kind of like opposite of the um megadeth record where the megadeth record did a lot that i didn't like opposed from what i did like Death Angel, they had some parts that I kind of didn't care for. I kind of forgot about. I was like, eh, this is just... But they had some really great songs on here. The title track, I Came for Blood, Alive and Screaming, some great songs yeah. on this record. And um, I was really, really surprised at this record. So it came in here at number three for me. Number two, I'm going Overkill, Scorch. Um, another record I wasn't really looking... I, 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 like everyone has said, a lot of the overkill records kind of blend in with each other. And I kind of thought that's what this record was going to be. And in some ways it is, but I, I was really surprised at how much I really enjoyed this record. Um, I thought that it was really, really thrashy in a lot of parts and it had some black Sabbathy type deals. Like, like, uh, Steve said, um, but uh, I thought Bobby Blitz sound great on this record. I thought um, Bob Bobby Blitz has some records where I, his vocals are kind of amped for me. But I, I thought I thought that this record was really really strong in the vocal department, and I found that the instrumental sections, well, the instruments on this record, the musical parts were really really heavy, really intense, really like kicked you in the teeth with like songs like uh. Twist, uh, Twist of the Wick was a great song. Scorch, great, great song. The Surgeon, I thought, was a great song as well. But um, really surprising record, in my opinion. But number one is uh, Exodus. I thought that this record really, 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 really was good. And I was really surprised when this record first came out. And I, I still listen to it a good bit even from the release date of this record. Um, the vocals, yeah, they, they're then maybe not the Paul Bailoff vocals that I really like, you know, but I really do enjoy. I think this record is the thrashiest out of all these records. I thought it was the most fun out of all these records. I, I was more interested in all these songs on here. Now, granted, this ain't, bonded by blood good but it's still really 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 good and so i thought uh elitist was a good song i heard some people complain about clickbait wasn't a great song but i enjoyed that rec i mean that song and uh mm -hmm. i just was in interested in this whole record the whole time so yep exodus coming in at number one. Oh, thanks for your input tonight all right we're gonna go to the dark Darkness of Norway. And oh. Obi, be the fly in the ointment here. You, you, what everybody picks as number six, you usually put it number one. Let's see if it's going to happen tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've listened to a few of his albums a lot. And I a hope few of his so. albums. 
I gave you guys I gave you guys six weeks to listen to six albums. That's how long we took off, I think. <laughs> yeah. So some albums I've listened to a lot. Some I've listened to this last week's. And uh, I'm going to start with number six. It's going to be Exodus. Wow. It yeah. is completely opposite than Miles. Look at this. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's not your thing. I'll just go to number five. <laughs> wow. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, you have a song? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Right, maybe wow. anti seed, maybe. All right, good. All right, move on to number five. We're running we number need... five is, is Metallica. Uh, I liked it better than what's happened last 30 years, too, because we do like Kirk write some riffs, something happens. If it's been up to me, Kirk could write the whole album, I would be fine. Uh, the songs I really liked was Shadows Follow, Room of Mirrors, and Chasing Lights. Chasing Light, yeah. Uh, number four for me is Death Angel. I liked it. It's been, it was quite different from what they have done in a little while, I thought. It was like kick a punch and was more like straight trash instead of their mm -hmm. experimental face uh songs i really liked was uh aggressor immortal be hated and revelation song uh for number mm -hmm. three i had testament i always been a eric peterson fan so he wrote yeah basically the whole album so this was a good ride for me uh songs i really like was uh, is Taurus gates code of uh something uh and the healers cool. Uh, number two is Overkill. Uh, Overkill has been on a, like everybody's been talking about, they've been kind of similar because they've been on a wave from Ironbound, mm -hmm. which was really like a new chapter in their in their discography. And then there were, the albums continuing after it's been kind of in the same way. Mm -hmm. But this one is like a new wave. It's kind of slower. It's kind of more meaty on the bone. It's... Maybe it's not so racer as the other ones. I feel it's more, it has more meat on the bones. And the songs, favorite songs is Twist of a Wick and Know Her Name and Going Home. Cool. Yeah. And for me, number one is Megadeth. I really. Wow. Like it. Ah. Yeah. it was my favorite album last year. I really like it because it really picked up pace and it's like, Dave has gotten back from the cancer and like already mm -hmm. fresh and recharged, and I really liked it. Uh, songs I really liked is uh, Celebutants, uh, Life in Hell, and Sacrifice are my three favorites. It comes and goes like who's the favorite, but these are the favorites now. I'll listen to this album a lot. Okay. <laughs> hey, this is truthful. This is why I like that different people on the channel. Exactly. <laughs> and you have everybody's ears work different. The song that I found the weakest from that Megadeth, no one's mentioned, is that Mission from Mars. I just thought it was weird. It's a comical <laughs> one. It's it's made to be it's fun. It's comical, but uh, I could do without it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's not my turn to talk. Hey, a few OB. people, it's at their favorites for some reason. I don't know why, but... So... Obi. So we... yes. Love, yeah. Love and respect, man. Cool. Obi's but, gonna be doing an episode in a couple of weeks, so you can pick on his picks too if you want. I have to yeah, add one. You're gonna like my picks. You're gonna like my albums. Oh, I can't, I can't wait. But yeah, I, I, let me add real quick. That just today I saw this thing from Guitar Player Magazine popped into my feed, and it said that Dave Mustaine says that there's only two players in the history of guitar who know how to use a whammy bar correctly. Those being Jeff Beck and David Gilmore. And everybody else should just play a hard tail guitar because they have no idea how to play whammy. Wow. And I have to say that if you listen to both my top picks, which were Exodus and the Death Angel, both those guys know what's up <laughs> with that repo arm, not whammy bar. And believe me, they can play their asses off. So touche, mm -hmm. Dave. But yeah, you know what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> They're going to separate the people from their work. Cool. So we've got 
we're I knew this is gonna be a long episode. So we've got me, Denny, Christian, and Count left. I'm actually yeah. gonna go to Denny next, and then he's gonna come back at the end and give the totals. But Denny, you can give us your picks now, then we're gonna go over to Christian, Ralphus, and I'll wrap it up, then we'll come back to you to see who uh, is the champion and who is the big loser of this event. Well, it's like there's already a battle at the top and a battle at the bottom. So okay. <laughs> like, but Ovi, Ovi did that start to like skew the numbers a little bit. <laughs> um, we need more. We need another Ovi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We uh, you know, like we're we're all metalheads. Um, I you know, and I try to give a fair chance to anybody. Like I, I usually look at the the weekly metal release, and I try to listen to everybody, even if it's a band like I dislike. Mm. I'll still check it out just because. I do respect the effort that people put in and the music they create. Uh, you know, we are critiques and it's our it's our taste. Uh, but a lot of freaking work goes in the in, in the back of all this metal we hear, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so uh but I, I so I tried to 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 listen to everything and I was able to get listen to all these six albums before um before they we had this this assignment. Um and you know, like I, of course, uh, I try to like uh, be objective, but then we listen to other stuff, and then it, it depending on what you listen to, it can make it look really good or it can make it look really bad, right? <laughs> uh so uh, my the the last album, um, I'm gonna go with Metallica. Um, you know, like I, <laughs> I, 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 I went with uh, Open Mind and and um. There, there's two tracks that I, that I like, and that's it. The rest could not like uh, it, it didn't it didn't grab me or anything. Um, I think the one of them is called Look Zaterna. I like the it's kind of a diamond head vibe to to like every song I like sounds like newer diamond head. Um, so so but I you know like I'm thinking like I and I keep saying that like it's probably so difficult for them to trying to like not repeat what they've done in the past trying to be new and probably break their head trying to like hey is this riff cool or not right um and like steve says 30 albums in the eye in the in the building 30 albums out so um it, it i guess it's hard to be objective but you know they have all the resources in the world they have all the time in the world you know, like I, I would still uh, expect like a bigger, better released, uh, but it was better than I expected. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was better than I expected. Production's good. A lot of good stuff on it. James, I don't mind his vocal solos are great. Kirk is good. It's just seems a couple, two, three songs seems coming from the heart. The rest seems like programmed. So uh, so that's my my last pick, but I still think it was not as bad as expected. Uh, then next is Megadeth. Uh, I really liked the album before, like Dystopia. Mm. I thought like a lot of it was was well written. I thought that um, Days vocal or well, I mean they always been like annoying as fuck, but I mean you know uh, it kind of fit the music if you like Megadeth. Uh, there's amazing guitar work on this album. Um, some of the the solo, like uh, I don't know, I never know if it's Dave or I think it's Keiko, the other guy now. So that's his yep. name, right? Keiko. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So I I never know which one it is, but uh, some of the stuff is is okay. Um, it's it's almost to me like maybe Dave is not aging well. <laughs> And he's having our time, like keeping with with the metal, but and like I think it's it's a mild when miles when you heard the the first uh, the first single, you like as like good hope for the album, and after that, like I felt the same too. Like I think the first single was Night Stalker or or something. I don't know which one it was, but <clears throat> yeah, it sounded sounded really good. And then once you start listening to all the songs, then somehow you just don't go visit the album again. So that's kind of like the 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 mm -hmm. test if you don't go and try to reach it again um after that 
Um, after that, I but this one I'm gonna go and listen again because I, I haven't had a chance yet to listen. It's or oh, I went with Overkill just because I uh my first impression was um they starting to like they starting to slightly go into creator route to try to write like soccer chant or or more like singable choruses. Um and I they they released like six or seven great albums in a row like like Ironbound, Electric Cage, White Devil mm -hmm. Armory, Grinding Wheel, Wings of War, they all like amazing. And they even before that it was good. But somehow this one I find um at first listening, it sound again like soccer, metal, doesn't always should you know, like it's it should be different in, in mm -hmm. my in my head anyway. But I'm gonna listen again. Maybe that's gonna be uh, one that I uh, that uh, I don't like at first, and that for more listening, maybe I'll like it. I did the mm -hmm. same with the new destruction. Like I, I was such a big fan of Mike, and he's a friend of mine. And because he's not there anymore, I don't want to like them. Oh, uh, <laughs> but but after you guys said no, it's good, it's good. I went back, listened to it, and I changed my mind. And I was like, oh yeah, it's actually pretty good. Once I it's amazing, amazing. <laughs> once I start smarting up, smartening up. Um, so I, I went with Overkill after that. After that, I went with Exodus. Um, I I like Exodus so much. Uh, they're they're like one of the best live metal band you can see. They're so aggressive. Like Tom Hunting is just a maniac. Like yeah. Uh, and the guitar playing, like it's such abstract, non not nice riffs. Like they're just not pleasant. Like they. <laughs> It sounds like what your a sound your face make when it's like scrape against cement. Like it's just <laughs> like abrasive, right? Um, but again, that's that's I'm always I'm I'm always looking for this like memorable moment. What am I gonna like two days later? Am I gonna like remember a riff or a a song or something like that? And and on this album, I was not having that as much as before. But from a performance standpoint, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, after that, uh, I went with Dead Angel. I uh, just saw them. I saw like the creator. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. Uh, Spirit World and Dead Angel. I had some tequila with uh, with Mr. Will Carroll, maybe too much. Nice. <laughs> it was kind of a wild night. But yeah, the, Dead Angel, like Rob and all those guys, they're like just Mark's great singer, front man. And like in, in this, uh, like, it's very well done metal, trash metal. They really like, you know, I, I feel like they're starting to improve like record after record even more. Um, and they're like, they're by touring so much and, and doing great performance. I think they're like, they're increasing their brand out there. And I think more and more people would go see that angel, even if they would not be opening for creator or sepulcher. I think, I think that night, like, I was everybody after the show um thought that Angel stole the sold the, wow. the show that night that they were the best band. Uh which is just like to tell you how how improved and how good they are. Mm. And that's a good album, like from start to finish, just so much good stuff on there. But my favorite one of all them, and that's just because like and Tony I think mentioned that before, um like the the songs are memorable, amazing choruses, uh, like uh, the Dream Deceiver and all those things. Like they're just like it's just like um, Eric Peterson has become, um, like one of the best trash metal songwriter out there. Uh, he's super underrated. Like a lot of people don't even know his name. A lot of people think like Alex Kolnick does everything right. Uh, but he's not, he doesn't do everything. Uh, and Eric Peterson and like the performance, like just by the rhythm section and mm. Chuck Billy, <laughs> I always say like, Oh, like Chuck Billy's the weakest link on in the band, but he's already, he's amazing at what he does. So like it fits. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, they, they're, they're like becoming stronger and stronger and like mm -hmm. they have like they have like past uh exodus 
in the uh, te- then the trash kind of like hierarchy, like when you you know you have the, the top four, they somehow they have pulled it off. Like uh, can't wait to see what's gonna happen now with Dave and Dave on drums and versus Gene and all that. But um, and they yeah, yeah so yeah. that's that's yeah, yeah that, that's my uh, but it's a lot of good metal in there. Uh, but when you 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 listen to other things. Mm-hmm. So many other bands are doing great things as well. So they they kind of get lost in, in the shuffle of everything else that uh, mm-hmm. that people are doing. That's it. Cool. That's my that's my scoring. That's your question for testament. Now is that Lombardo is gone and Hoagland's gone, and they're bringing in another drummer. And I, mm-hmm. someone else may know in this panel who that drummer is. I I read it, but I don't remember. Can't remember who it it's was. uh it's Chris uh, Duos or something. Okay. And that's uh, kind of cool when you're bringing something fresh. That's mm-hmm. kind of cool. That may if a young eager drummer, he can do yeah. good. He's got bigger, some. Drum. He's got some big shoes to fill. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. But uh, let's keep this rolling. We're gonna go over to Christian next. Welcome to the channel tonight, and then we'll. Ralph and me will wrap it up and we'll get the score and we'll try to get this thing done. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thanks for having me on again. Sorry if I was a couple minutes late. That's but okay. Sometimes things come up. Uh, so yeah, my picks here, they might uh, they might skew it a little bit, but maybe not too much. Um, but uh, at the bottom for me, number six, it's, uh, it's going to be Metallica, 72 seasons. Um, just because it's number six here, I mean, one thing that I don't think it is, I don't think it's a steaming pile of shit. But <laughs> at the same time, I don't think it's as great as, you know, some of the, you know, some of the classic stuff that they've done. But um, I think probably my favorite track is the title track, 72 Seasons and um, and Luxatarna. Um, I don't know if I even pronounced that right. But uh, yeah, I think there was some, you know, there's some good solos um, and kind of the the thought process of 72 seasons. And, you know, I think it's, you know, kind of a, you know mm-hmm. interesting concept. Um, it seems like James is, you know, can still come up with some, you know, some good lyrics and good concepts and ideas as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, the album does feel kind of long. Like it, it seems like it starts out good, but then like the second half, you're kind of just, I don't know, you know, not enough, but uh, overall, it, it's not bad. Um, if they did this after the Black Album, maybe I never would have jumped off the Metallica train. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But true point. Yeah. So um, number five for me is going to be uh, Scorched from Overkill. Um, I, I actually think this uh, this album's really good. Uh, I love the title track. Uh, Going Home is another good one. Um, Fever, the slow song. It's a bit different, but mm-hmm. I I like it a lot. Uh, no, her name is good. And the last one, Bag of Bones, I like that one too. Um, Bobby Blitz, I still think he sounds he sounds good. Um, sometimes I think his vocals sound like at sometimes I think he sounds comical. Like I think a song like um like Elimination or something like that. But I still love it. Um, so going on to number four now. Um, this one was initially a number three for me, but there's one album that um. I didn't really start listening to until maybe a couple of days ago, so it kind of crept up on me. But anyway, number four for me, it's going to be Megadeth, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Um, I like the title track on that one. Life in Hell is a good song. Night Stalkers, I like that one. And I like the cameo by Ice-T because I do, I do like Body Count, at least probably the first Body Count album. And then a couple of the other latter ones have been, haven't been bad either. Uh We'll be back. So let me talk. Um, Dogs of Chernobyl. That one's all right. Um, Soldier on. I thought it was a pretty good song. I think the one you're talking about for the mission to Mars, I kind of agree with that one. Like I like there's like the end part of that song where it gets like really fast and thrashy, but then like the rest of that song before that, it's kind of, I don't know. I thought it was kind of dumb, but still not a bad album. I mean, Dave, it sounds like, you know, I think he's still got some piss and vinegar in there, but he sounds a little, he's definitely, he's a little rusty, I think. He just sounds that way. And I've heard um, a friend of mine who see him on, uh, I think on the last tour, said he just sounded awful live. Wow. Too bad. Yeah. So anyway, um, 
that's my number four. Number three, this is one that, um, like I said, I really only started listening a couple of days ago, and that's uh, the Death Angel Humanicide. Um, this one's uh, pretty good, I think. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of really great playing on it. Um, I like the title track, uh, Humanicide. Uh, Ghost of Me is a good one. Um, I Came for Blood. I like that one. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of killer syllables on it. Um, I think they really, you know, it's really, I mean, it's thrashy, but then there's some parts where they can be like melodic, I think, too. But it's still a very aggressive. Um, and I'm, I'm upset because they they opened, they did the tour recently with uh, uh, last fall with uh, Testament and Exodus. And they, yep. were, yeah, I they saw went that. on first and I got to the show. They already, they were already off the stage by the time uh -huh. I got to the show. Now I'm kind of like, oh man, I, I should have gotten there early. But mm -hmm. these things happen. So what are you going to do? Um, sorry, that was my number three. So number two, it's going to be Exodus, Persona Non Grata. I think this is a freaking killer record. Um, just the brutalness of it, you know, just the the darkness of it. I think, you know, one of the things that, I, I mean, you know, the rhythm section's good, the guitar playing's good, but I, they always, their lyrics are always... I don't know. They're, I mean, they're really violent, but they're like creatively violent. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, I, just thinking of a track like you know, prescribing horror, where he's talking about um, the flaminamide and you know, babies being you know, midwives taking lives, and I don't know. It, it's it's just really really dark <laughs> and evil sounding. Um, slipping into madness is another great one. The title track, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Uh, how could you know? With a song title like that, you can't go wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Liar Lord, that's another one that I like. And even that the kind of guitar intro thing at the beginning, it yeah, it's like they take a little left turn right there, but it's it fits what they, you know, the song goes into. And number one for me, it's gotta be Testament, Titans of Creation. Um, I think this is a great record. Um, Children of the Level, awesome song. Uh, they did uh they did like a cartoon video for that too which is um very cool pretty entertaining yeah uh world war three dreamer deceiver uh healers night of the witch um mm -hmm. uh, I, I really don't think there's a, a bad track on this album and i kind of like this the even just like kind of like the lyrical theme going on you know that this mm -hmm. it looks like you know ancient history ancient religious type figures and types of things on there is um is pretty cool um yep. and and they killed it live when i saw it with them in exodus they were i mean they both killed it live mm -hmm. and after the show i got to meet chuck billy just hanging nice. out at the club someone um was, was uh getting their picture taken with them and they asked me if i could hold their phone and like hey i'm right here let's get a photo i was wearing my saxon shirt he's it's like cool. hey it's a cool shirt man and I'm like yeah thanks you know nice. it's cool to get a compliment from from a rock star like that i guess mm -hmm. um, yeah but yeah, I mean, he's and yeah, he. I think you know, vocally, he still sounds great. I think, um, yeah. Titans. I think it's just as good as um, I would say it's just as good as um, some of their you know those classic you know New Order or Legacy or, um, you know, I don't yeah. I don't think Testament's done a bad record to be honest. I can't think of. One I record. I agree with Steve Levin. They have just been hitting them out of park. I mean, they they took a few years off. They came back with the formation of damnation yeah, which was yeah, just killer was awesome. and that much like overkill they haven't disappointed in a long time no, overkill was I putting out strong good. albums if you want to compare thrash bands from that it, it seems those two have really been putting them out so yep. well no, they, did, they didn't go soft so that's, that's no no well, well thanks christian for your input tonight and uh Thank sorry you. to make you wait so long count ralphus Oh, but someone has to go last and of course we'll keep the heavy metal historian it has a million props and all kinds of other stuff and keep it interesting and then i'll wrap it up what does count ralphus have at number six oh my it's working i see it like freezing up every now and again on me but um yeah so number six uh the sick the dying and the boring and uninspired Wow, another one hating on Megadeth. Jeez. <laughs> Great times. 
the, the vocal just kill it for me. It sounds like he's reading the lyrics out of a it sounds like the words at all. There's no real anger and you know, it's it's just so uninspired sounding. Is I hear good parts of the album here and there. A lot of great leads. I think it's produced really good. Great musicianship. I just it's such a boring. I had to listen to it in two parts. I couldn't get through it wow. all the first. And it's the same thing with the Metallica album. I mean, these bands take so long to put out an album, and then they feel like they got to put out an album that's over an hour long. And it's it's uh, I would I miss the days with the EPs where coming out in between the bands you know i like mm -hmm. I, I like eps you know throw that ep out and then throw a good solid 10 song album out i don't need to be like forcing myself to get through an album i want to sit through it in my car ride to the store or something and mm -hmm. i don't know it's, both albums uh that's my next one is metallica is uh you know they both suffer from bad vocals but there's good parts throughout it um oh go back to the megadeth uh at the very end when they the cover songs i hear the opening riff to police truck the dead kennedy's cover and then my ears perked up i was like oh, wow you know dead kennedy's cover they do it at half the speed the dead kennedy's do it you're a thrash band covering a punk band you're gonna do it at half the speed they butchered that song that was the worst cover i ever heard of a dead kennedy song okay <laughs> so then going back to uh metallica it's like um you know i i didn't i didn't hate it it was um what I expected. Uh, I thought Hardwired and Death Magnetic, all three of them are sort of the same. I like Death Mag Magnetic out of the three the best, but they've been kind of on that same course with these albums, and they're not horrible. There's there's decent parts here and there, and you can see they're trying to be heavy again. I just don't think they know after all the success that they've had that they don't know how to go back to, to what they were. You know, it's just they're trying, but it's just not it's not real. I don't know. It, it, but it, it's not horrible. I don't hate it. Everything else on this list I, I like. But uh, so I go for my number three would be uh, or number. Yeah. Number whatever. Uh, number four. Say, number four. Yeah. Number four. It's, um, I'm going to go with Death Angel. I think it's a really good solid album. I, I really like the last two albums before this better, but it's it's pretty much on the same pace They're They have they're back to thrashing. They do that little bit of experimenting and he tries to sing a little bit clear. I love like how the first two songs on this, it sounds like Tom Araya singing. It's good, heavy vocals. If it was more like that all the way through, I, I definitely probably would have ranked it a little higher, but overall, good solid album. And uh, I, like Steve was saying, I really loved the first album. And then I didn't care for anything for years and years until like a couple albums ago when they got back and, and started putting out new stuff, they went back to the old sound. And, uh, you know, same thing with Megadeth. I really loved the first two albums. And then, you know, I heard things here and there that I liked throughout the years, but I never thought they put out another classic album again. Well, Metallica, it's the first four albums. So then um, next I'm going to go with Testament. And uh, again, another great solid album. And they've been on a good streak of albums for a long time now. But uh, with them, it was their first album I really liked. And then, you know, it was kind of the timing. Once I got into the more extreme stuff, they just were super weak to me for years and years. And it wasn't until like a decade later when they put out that Demoniac album that they got back on my radar. And pretty much everything since then I've liked, even though they're not as heavy as they were on that album. But uh, it's good, solid stuff. Lots of great leads, great musicianship again, great production, good, solid album. Uh, now, my last two is uh, Overkill. I'm going to go with and... Uh, good solid album it's it's just like um they're the most consistent like ed said of all these bands they've they've you know you're, you're pretty much always going to get what you're expecting they don't experiment too much they get a little goofy at times and uh but they they put out solid albums i just think like you they they get lost in the mix of all the albums that they got and they all got the skulls with the green and in, in on the cover so they kind of just all blend together after a while and True. um but I, I love the first probably three albums, I would say, for Overkill and the EP that they first put out. And um, But then it's like I liked everything that they put out, but it's like there's nothing real that I consider a real true classic, you know. But this is what I would expect from an Overkill album, and I think it's a good solid album for all these years of doing it and be able to still do it at a high level like that. Pretty cool. But my number one, Exodus, 
Um, I think it's just like a really great thrashing album. And they're another band, Bonded by Blood came out. I fucking worship that album. Pe- Pleasure to the Flesh it was already a big drop down for me when that came out. And then all the heavier stuff was coming out when Fabulous Disasters and stuff like that came out. I didn't care for any of those albums. I kind of don't mind them now. But for, during that time, I didn't like any of them. I liked the Rob Dukes era and the tempo of the dam. That was when Sousa kind of got on my radar. It's like, wow, he, he can really sing good. And I mm-hmm. thought that was a really good, vicious album for the time. But this was a, a great album. And, you know, they, they've been putting out good, solid stuff for a, a while now. Uh, I seen what Ed was saying about his voice gets a little annoying, but I could say the same thing with Bobby Blitz. Like, you know, after a, a little too long a period, you kind of get a little bit annoyed with their their vocal style, but they're both super unique vocalists and you you know who they are right away when you hear it. But yeah, you, you, you don't really need too long an album with these singers. But uh, yeah, so that's my number one. I'm going to go with Exodus and that's it. Cool. Well, right, thank you, Ralph. I guess it's my turn finally. It's been a long episode. I hope everybody out there watching is enjoying it. And uh, we're back. And we'll probably be back next week, too. We're going to try to do a couple in a row. So, anyhow, I'm going to say that my number six is going to be the same as a lot of people on here. And it is Metallica. And I tell you what, listening to this album... I would agree with some other people saying here, it's the best album they have done in a long, long time. I agree. I listened to it a bunch. Uh, I forced myself to listen to it the first time thinking, because I still have the Lulu syndrome with this band and <laughs> some of the other bad things they've really put out. So I really w- go near them with a, and I know we have a ton of fans that love them. I have a ton of customers. I have a friend that listens to XM Sirius Radio, the Liquid Metal. They have been number one on the Devil's Dozen for months. I like they say this is voted in. I'm thinking this guy and Overkill has not been on once. It's not been on the eyes. Like why isn't Overkill being played on this a little bit and making the top fourteen? But that's a whole other subject. So anyhow, so no, it's not too hard because they play all kinds of deathcore and stuff on there. But anyhow, Metallica has been number one for weeks on there. But I listened to this album and I didn't hate it. I did not, I, who said it? it wasn't a screaming pile of shit. So it wasn't a Lulu. The songs that stuck out on it are Screaming Suicide. I thought that was a pretty heavy track. Of course, Lux of Turner, which I've heard a million times. And I do play Sirius XM and, the, and Rock Fantasy at times. And I have a good friend of mine to hang out with. And that's all he has on the radio. So he's got, I hear a lot of that. So, and if Darkness Out of Sun, it's kind of grown on me a little bit. So, not saying it's a horrible record. I kind of dig a lot of it. I've listened to it a ton because we haven't done an episode in six weeks and we have six albums to listen to. And the next one in a row, I'm going to feel is, I think I need more time with this, is Overkill. I do not find it as strong as the last couple records by them. Maybe it's because I haven't listened. I've listened to it a lot. I've got this album in and I just don't, I like Twist of the Wick. I like Scorched. Those are two songs I stuck out for me on it. I'm not saying it's a bad album at all. I just don't think it's as strong as the last couple. And some other people thought it was slowed down a little bit. Maybe that's the reason. I don't hate Dave Mustaine as much as everyone on this panel, other than Ovi. I don't think that Megadeth album is that bad. I love the song We'll Be Back. I think it's one of the strongest things he's done in a while. Of course, that doesn't make up for the whole album. I like the title song. And I really don't like the Mission from Mars thing. Uh, I, as I listed this on here, it could have went up higher until I listened to it again today at work. And I said, there's a couple songs that is not that great. Going on to Death Angel, which is going to be the next one in line. That album is killer. And I tell you what, over the years, I had Death Angel in the store years ago. They're a great band, great guys. In fact, they still remember, like, one or two guys are still in the band remember coming to the shop, and that means a lot. And Will Carroll's become one of my good friends from being on the channel. Got to hang out with Will and see the Death Angel tour with Testament and uh, Exodus last fall. It was great to sit with him and sitting and watching Dave Lombardo play. That's what I was, it was like, Testament were great that night and getting to watch Lombardo. I was like, why, why would you watch anything else? It's because uh, he hadn't been in Testament many, many years. And I guess now he's gone already, but it was nice 
to catch him playing drums from that night. So Death Angel, I Came for Blood, I think it's a killer track. Alive and Screaming were the two songs I picked from it. And my number two is going to be Exodus. I think this album's really good. I can listen to it all the time. It's aggressive. It's nasty. It's rated pretty high on a few others lists. This is thrash metal. They're still doing thrash metal. Slipping in the madness is so catchy. The beatings will continue. The fires of division, which is another great song. What the hell this world's living in now? It seems like there's just a fire division going on every day when you turn the TV on. So fits my thing. Exodus number two. Number one, one of my favorite thrash bands. I think they get stronger every day. Playing play Chuck Billy's The Weak Link. I guess some of you could say that with the musicians that are in this band normally having killer guitar players, drummers. But Chuck Billy did something in the 90s that none of these bands we were talking about did. Testament got heavier in the 90s. While Creator was experimenting and all these bands were trying to do some grunge or whatever the hell it was, Testament said, no, we're going to get Chuck. I'm going to get guys from death. And we're going to make this shit heavier. And they did, you know, Demonic and they Love. did some the great albums in the 90s. The Gathering. They, the Gathering is um, could be their best record. A lot of people talk about the early stuff. That Gathering album is killer. And uh, highlights, no. of course, this record came out when I wasn't even really in the mood to listen to metal. It's like, I got a record store. I can't be open. We can't go to concerts. But then on the other hand, it was great to get something new to listen to when you couldn't do anything else and a lot of bands didn't put records out they had this ready to come out and i'm sure it got hurt by the pandemic but children of the next level great to see them play that live the night of the witch i think is another good song off it curse of osiris i don't think there's a really bad song on this album and testament is my number one for this week and I don't really dislike any of these albums, even though the Metallica album is the weakest on this list. It's 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 better than anything they've done in a long time. And come on and talk Metallica with me. So I know we're going to get some hate. Uh, Steve Levin's never going to get on the guest list. That Ed, that pro Metallica's pl probably never going to play for Armageddon Productions if they see this episode. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And aggression. You guys were getting called to open up the arena tour next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, I guess it's time to go back to our our honorable scorekeeper. He's been doing this for weeks and. Next week, we're coming back with five or six albums again, I think. So, boy, that's a lot to do in one week, though. We, we're yeah. doing a we're doing a part two, a part three of this, and maybe even a part four, because what we come up with is the top two albums from tonight are going to qualify to go on. Next week, we are going to touch on bands that aren't, per se, U.S. bands. Maybe one will be thrown in. We're going to add like the German thrash, the creator, the destruction, uh, Voivod are going to be on next week's episode, next time's episode. Then we're going to change it up for the third episode. We're going to talk about newer bands in the new wave of thrash metal. Oh, no. So we're trying to do <laughs> one of those and pick two from that. Then we'll come back on a final episode. We'll have six bands, we'll have six albums that qualified. That was our idea. Then Ovi's going to go back to the 80s and do some thrash metal. So there's a lot of thrash metal on this channel right now. So that's nice. fun to talk about. So what are the two? Let's start out at number six, and then we'll get up and we'll see what two qualified for this summer of thrash metal battle here. Well, <laughs> I can tell you already that we have, we're going to have a problem. Uh-oh. There's a tie for third? There's a tie for two, for second spot. All right, we'll start with oh. six, and we'll get to that spot. All right. And so we'll number have to have six, a playoff, I guess. <laughs> number six, uh, you know, the veterans of the scene uh, still can play, but just being outperformed. The well, number six is Metallica. Uh, it is what it is. They're the ones selling. Number the, five, they're the ones selling out football stadiums, but we got them at number six. So sorry, guys. Yeah, but. <laughs> Go look at the people who are going. 
No, just kidding. No, I'm sorry. No, no, no. All right, well, hold that thought. They're they're nice people too. They're nice people. I know. They're Some of them heads. are my kids. Some of them are my kids. So I can't. I can't. Yes, of course. They have enough material. At least they're going to a metal show, right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, right. Number five. Number five. Metallica's favorite friends, Megadeth. Uh, number five. And what are the numbers that these guys have? On the so Meta Metallica scored uh, 14 points. Okay. While Megadeth scored 20 points. Okay. So a little bit. Because more. of Ovi. <laughs> yeah, because Ovi. <laughs> like half, hey, the, uh, Ovi. half of those points are from Ovi. <laughs> yeah, I liked them. In, I, I think I liked them for 30 years. Euthanasia okay. was the first album oh. I got. All right. Well, continue nothing wrong with that. Here. Nothing continue, wrong with that. At number on. four, yeah, we have Overkill with thirty-five points. Okay, shocking. That's shocking for me. Yeah, Bobby Blitz gets it done. A legend. <laughs> I love, he is a legend. All right, and now at number two, we have a tie. There's no number three. Number two at thirty-eight points each. Mm. The Bay Area. Brothers, we have well, actually, it's all Bay Areas after that. Yeah. <laughs> but, sure is. but the Bay, the Bay Area uh, guys, we have Exodus and Death Angel tied for tied, All right, uh, in spot number two, uh, and then number one, uh, Titans of Creation with Testament. Uh, they have forty-four points. And what were the ones tied with for second? Thirty-eight points. All right. The Testament yeah. is our grand winner. We may have to rethink our thing now because we've got three bands qualifying tonight. Hey, how about okay. you? Our our viewers decide this tiebreaker. Make sure you guys put your top six in the comments and you will be our tiebreaker to see who moves on. Will it be Exodus or will it be Death Angel moving on to the next round to go against creator or voivod or municipal waste or power trip or whoever comes out of the next three episodes nice yeah, you just count, count them up in the comments right before that we tape we'll the next count them up yeah and we'll, we'll decide right before we tape and i do it. have some comments that i put online and you know what that that could be another tiebreaker I did put a, a couple comments up and I'm going to read one off quickly before we hang up because I promised that I would. Give me one second, everyone. And yeah. I, it's kind of cool that like you bring, bring actually the comments into the episode. Like, so they are. I, I the promised show. I was going to do this last night and I just remembered about it now. So let me just find my post. Give me a second here as I shuffle. Oh, I want to give a shout out to Eric Alexander. He's from Long Island, New York. It's, he was His family was up in the area a couple weeks ago, stopped in Rock Fantasy. They were doing the motocross thing at the fair here in town, at the fairgrounds. And a couple of the, I think his wife came in and maybe her friend, and they said to give a shout out to Eric. Loves watching the channel. He also watches the uh, Hudson Valley Squares on Monday nights and He's a big fan, so wanted to give a shout out to him. Ooh. And uh, let's get a comment from someone off here. We've got someone that picked six, uh, all six of them. Let's see if we can find one that did. Oh man, I don't know if we can. I don't. No one picked all six. Huh. Oh wait a minute. All right, we got Testament, Megadeth, Exodus, Death Angel, Seventy Two Seasons. An overcall coming in last from someone named Joseph Johnson. So I did mention someone on, and we've got a oh, we've got another one. Alan Skorovich, who is part of Orange County Pinball, Rock Fantasy Pinball, Exodus, number one. Non-stop high energy with screaming vocals, is what he says. Testament is number two. Overkill is number three. Death Angel are number four. Megadeth is number five. Was not feeling it. Not the Megadeth I'm used to, he says. Metallica, number six. Ev oh, boy. Every song seems the same and drawn out disappointed. So that's one of our guests uh, 
people I put on too, but uh, you, the you, the viewers, will help decide this tiebreaker. I think that the Metallica album suffers. I would call it the Iron Maiden syndrome because Iron Maiden likes to put out albums well, like, an hour, like an hour and a half long. Uh, if you just <laughs> trim some of these things down, hey, I'm not the artist. Like like Denny says, a lot of hard work goes into this stuff. We're just critics and. And that would make the fans wait five, six years, throw out a couple of EPs in the meantime, you know, and instead of a big giant album. Memo and, to, get a, and get a better fucking album cover. That album, <laughs> wait a minute. And put out some fucking good material, for God's sakes. No. Now, being someone that markets, like, T-shirts and stuff, thinking that that's a T-shirt that people are going to want to buy a yellow t-shirt with a baby Listen. crib. I just don't see it being. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bring Puss. Bring Puss. You got to bring Puss head back and make a nice. Uh, yeah. A Metallica, a like a damaging. I, I sell tons of Metallica shirts. But the ones they want are just like Tony said. Because Tony works in a music store also. They Ooh. come in. They want Metall Kill Em All shirts. Matt. Ride the Lightning. And Metallica is smart enough to do that because there's other bands that don't do that for stores like over uh, yeah, Megadeth. Yeah, Megadeth, yeah, Megadeth I don't get the though. old shirts. Uh, it, Overkill. Some of these bands, if they would just make prints of these other uh, early albums, those are the ones that are, they're really going to sell on a record. You know, the thing about Metallica though is Cliff Burton. He had a vision. He had a. He wants okay. something. He was classically trained, so they got big variation <laughs> off the Cliff. They kind of. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a visionary in the band anymore. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard from Metallica's tour shirts, so they're gonna put a baby Dave Mustaine in the baby crib. No, they're <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> they're crying about them, so they're putting them in the in the in the crib. But no, I, I feel idea. I feel that album would would be better with a couple songs cut off, and I the same thing with the with the with the last couple Maiden albums. <laughs> The I heard the bars down right in the fan club yeah. because of the last album. I was so disappointed. I quit the whole fan club thing with what? them. I was trained me so bad with that. It's so bad album. Yeah. Sinjutsu. Oh, I'm like, why not? Hey, uh, if you want to watch an episode on Sinjutsu versus the latest <laughs> Halloween, go back into the Rock Fantasy archives. It's a classic. Chris Allo is priceless on it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that, who was who was on that episode here tonight that was on that same one but it was it was priceless it was but uh anyhow we're gonna wrap this one up please take a moment in the in the comments to list your top six and whatever you'd like to talk about with these records and we'll see you back here real soon on the rock fantasy files for ed farsley tony dio Stephen levin ovi danny barth christian who i'll never say his name right Count Ralphus <laughs> and Miles. Miles, you can go wrestle an alligator. <laughs>